Hello and welcome to Serial at Midnight. I'm Heath, and in this episode we are dialing the clock back to 1965 for a conversation about Box of Pinups, the British sounds of 1965. This is a brand new CD box set that has just been released by Cherry Red Records out of the UK on their Grapefruit label. And this is an education in a box for a certain time, a certain place. Why the title Box of Pinups? Well, in 1965, there was a cultural explosion happening in Britain. The music, the fashion, the art, the film scene. Michael Caine is our new anti-actor. There was something happening. Uh, there was just this explosion of youth, of, of celebration. Everything was changing. And there was a, a book of photographs that was published that captured some of the most influential movers and shakers of that time. It was called Box of Pinups. In the 70s, David Bowie released an album called Pinups that was itself an homage, a reference to that, that whole scene. This is the soundtrack to the cultural explosion that we're talking about. This is uh, a collection. It's three discs and I believe 92 tracks that chronicle all the different sounds of, of what was happening during those years. I'm going to show you what we're dealing with here. This booklet is indispensable. We're going to talk about this in just a second, but here's our first disc. We start with the pretty things, midnight to six man. We end with the syndicats. Here's our second, our second disc. We start with the Yardbirds, and we end with the, and the final disc starts with the animals and it ends with the kinks. Where have all the good times gone? Uh, but the the introduction to this, you know, this is this whole collection was compiled, annotated by David Wells, who oversaw the project as well. Um, but David Wells has written these fantastic liner notes about what this box set is. And I wanted to actually, instead of just reading about it to you, I kind of wanted to pull some quotes here because I think that this does a really good job. It says it better than I could ever say it. So. Uh, it was certainly an epic year for British music, a dazzling, dizzying melange of visceral kinks, pretties, garage band raunch, blue-eyed club soul, searchers-inspired jingle jangle folk rock, and zombies poets style moody minor chord introspection, all colored by such unfamiliar sonic tricks as feedback, fuzz boxes, and in Graham Bond's case, the Mellotron, an instrument that would play a major part in the development of British pop in the next couple of years. Uh, and then he goes on to talk about how uh, over the course of four hours and 92 tracks, Box of Pinups takes in the market leaders as well as the year's hard up heroes and nowhere men. Established top 10 acts are joined by many who would never quite reach that level. Glorious one shot unknowns and formative efforts from such young hopefuls as Elton John. Rod Stewart and Mark Bolan, all of whom would, like Bowie, have to wait a few years before they shook off their status as minor players in the mid 60s London club scene to become pinups in their own right. And then we begin the music. I mean, that is such a, it actually, the way that, that, that David has written that, it actually gives me goosebumps because it was such a, if you're one of those people who music moves you and really takes you someplace and it speaks to you, uh, you know what this means, right? You know what that particular time meant. So we launch into the tracks itself. I'm not going to go page by page here, but every single artist on this, every song is accompanied by a photograph of the band. If they can put the 45 cover up, they will do that as well. Like a lot of these have, you know, there's like right here, we'll have the, the, the original album art or the 45 art, seven inch art. Uh, with context, with the, the liner notes about what that song meant, where it charted, what it, how it performed, uh, when it came out, you know, like December 1965, uh, original released on a 7-inch seven, seven by Fontana Records. I mean, that's amazing stuff for the music file. And uh, there are so many, so most of this is unexplored country for me. Like I was really, this was an education for me because, you know, I... I don't know if you know this, but I am not English. Uh, I know, right? But so I didn't grow up with any of this stuff on the radio and then radio's dead anyway, right? Radio has been dead for a long time, but I didn't grow up in the shadow of some of these, these acts and some of them would transcend, you know, I'm going to read some of the bands here to you like uh, small faces. We, we know about them, right? Uh, Rod Stewart, of course, um, Manfred, man, the Yardbirds. Uh, so many of these, Oh, um, the Zombies, The Kinks, of course, right? Like music fans know those bands, but then there are so many others that are so obscure because they, 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 they put out an album and they put out a single 
and it just didn't really perform and they either did not succeed or it would be years later when they would succeed. So the Chasers, First Gear, Zoot Money's Big Roll Band, Mickey Finn, uh, The Couriers, The Phrase, The Original Phrase, uh, The Eyes, The High Numbers. Hey, Donovan's on here. We know Donovan. Uh, the Carnaby. Hey, the animals, they're so, it's such an eclectic mix of the, the hits and then the obscurities. There's an obscurity here from Jimmy Page, pre-Led Zeppelin Jimmy Page. I'm going to try to find uh, that listing here in the, in the liner notes because I want to talk to you guys about it. And even Jimmy Page himself was, oh, I, I love, I love this 45 cover right here. That is, this is the beautiful woman with a, with a kitten. So fantastic. Uh, Jimmy Page, She Just Satisfies, originally released in, uh, in February of 1965 by Fontana Records. Uh, Jimmy Page was a session musician at the time. His girlfriend, who was uh, uh, Jackie DeShannon, talked him into recording a song, so he did. And his comment on it was, I played all the instruments on it except for the drums, and I sang on it too, which is quite unique. She Just Satisfied, She's ju She Just Satisfies, that's what it was called, It's Better Forgotten. But it's not forgotten anymore because it's on this box set or it's in this box set. And we get we get to hear... I mean, again, it's not a remarkable track. It's not like, oh, that's the guy that will one day become a guitar god. Um, it's not like that. But it for, his, for history, for historical perspective, it is so cool to get some of this stuff all in one place. Uh, Cherry Red Records really does such a great job of collecting these narratives, right? I was talking about... You wouldn't think that music tracks can tell, but they can. They tell a narrative, and there's so many of these, um, the way that they curate, like, oh, this is the Danish underground scene at this point in time. This is the prog this is early progressive stuff, right? Like 1972, progressive sounds. I just love the way that these things are curated, and they don't lean too far in one direction or the other. They balance out the hits with the obscurities, and it's just magical. And they always end it at the perfect spot like this, you know, like, uh, the kinks were, where have all the good times gone? When David Bowie covered where have all the good times gone is the final track of his 1973 album pinups. It was a nostalgic look back at what, what, even at the early stage, what even at that early stage was already being viewed as a golden age of mid sixties, British pop. But for its ever contrary writer, the song had primarily been a way of expressing his gloomy cynicism with the new youth centered world that his contemporaries seemed to be enjoying without question. So my, man the kinks this is fantastic i just wanted to show you guys this i'm going to hold this up I'm, i waited till further in the video because i i wanted to i wanted to make you wait for it but i'll hold this up you can see the bands themselves you can see what's included uh it's just beautiful stuff it's just a just such a such a well well curated well researched set there's the album covers the 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 cover of each CD has a performance by the band that's 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 number one on that album. So you know, again, like the Pretty Things and uh, the Yardbirds, right? And then the Animals. It's just so well done. And this stuff clearly, you can tell my passion for this, right? You can hear it in the way I talk about it. I have a lot of respect for this. This is uh, it's been a, it's been an education for me, and I think very highly of it. So this is a box of pinups. The British Sounds of 1965. It is, as I'm recording this video, it is brand new. It's only been out for a matter of days. Uh, it hit first in the UK and then America got it a little bit later. But uh, I wanted everyone to know about it. If you pick it up, let me know. You know, I, I say this sometimes. My music coverage does not get the same amount of views or engagement as my movie coverage does. But clearly I have such a heart for it. I want to hear from those of you who also have a heart for it. Let's shout it out in the comments. Are you there? Do you, do you enjoy seeing things like this? I, I want to I want to celebrate the music side of Serial at Midnight in the comments of this video. So, uh, the box box of pinups it's it's out now. I'm gonna, you know what I'll put a link in the description of uh, this video to where you can pick this up in a couple of different places. But for me, it has been you know every, that's like it's such an eclectic mix of songs, right? Like not everything is like oh, but again. It, it hits in such a way that uh, it has value even beyond like, well, I, I like this song. It's so much deeper than that. It's education, right? So, all right, I'm rambling. Guys, thanks so much. Take care. Until next time, here's where to go and what to do.